for this tutorial I am using Primo Sculpey in a very pale grey, a black, cadmium red, white and a large amount of yellow. Yellow is going to form the basis of this butterfly so you need the most of that. Then I'll be using an acrylic roller, exacto knife, needle tool, flexible blade and off camera I have a pasta machine. So first you're going to cut the yellow in half and add to it a very small amount of red. Red is a really strong colour so you're only going to need a very small amount to add to the yellow to create an orange. If you want your orange to be more intense you can add more red to it but I suggest you do this gradually. Once you are happy with the colour orange that you have made you can then start taking some of the hue out of the yellow by adding white to it. Just mix it so that it's slightly paler than the cadmium yellow that you get out of the packet. Next we're going to work on the Skinner blend between the orange and the yellow. We're going to fold the clay over so that we've got a double layer of it and then cut out a tr long triangle from the yellow and the orange. When we put these together that will form a oblong or a rectangle and this is the basis of the Skinner blend. You need to really push the two colours together so that when you put them through the pasta machine they don't come apart. Once you're happy that they're stuck together reasonably firmly you want to put it through the pasta machine on your thicker setting before folding from top to bottom and putting it through the folded side down the pasta machine. Eventually this will create a really nice blend from yellow to orange. Then you're going to fold it so that it's about 3cm thick and pop it through the pasta machine on an increasingly thin setting so that you get a nice long tape. We're going to cut the tape into 3cm portions and then stack it from light to dark or dark to light depending on which way you've got the tape. Use the flexible blade underneath each of the segments so you get a nice clean break from whatever cutting mat or tile or surface you're using. Once you've stacked all the pieces you should end up with a block that looks something like this. Now I wanted some extra orange on the bottom so I'm just putting some more squares on the bottom um, using a scrap of orange that we have left from the Skinner blend. Take some time to really push all the layers together with your gradient block because you don't want it coming apart later. So we're just going to take a piece off the end, it's about a quarter of the entire block and we're going to sort of squish it down so that it's longer. This is called reducing. Once we've squished it down so that it's about twice the length it was, we're going to cut it in half and then pop it dark side to dark side. So we sort of have orange in the middle and yellow toward the outer edges. This is going to create the orange bar at the um, top of the butterfly wing, so we're going to try and shape it. We don't want it to have nice neat sides so I use uh, sort of the rounded bit of my exacto knife just to create a bit of a dent in it so that it doesn't just look like a smooth line. We sort of go in for a blotch effect I guess. Once you're happy with your blotch um, you can start building the wing and you're going to use a sausage technique for this. So you roll out bits of yellow, just plain yellow, um, and you build up the wing slowly. Now I like to build it up so that I start at the um, bit that meets the body and then work my way outwards. You may prefer the other way around, it's absolutely up to you which way you do it, but I would suggest building it slowly, keeping an eye on a reference picture and just building, building, building. It takes a little bit of time, but it's absolutely worth it. I think what I like most about building a cane this way is that you can um, put in and take out whatever you want. So I decided there was too much orange in my general splodge, so um, I took some out and I squished it together and then you can add more yellow to build up the outer part of the, of the cane, of the wing, um, and you can really make it what you want it to be. There's so much control when you're building a cane in this sort of manner with the, with the sausage technique and you can make it whatever shape you want. Once you've built the wing to how you want it, just give it a nice little shape and we'll start work on the bottom wing. The bottom wing has a really big orange splodge going along the bottom of the bottom wing. So I'm pulling and um, trying to really lengthen the orange gradient plug that we had made. And this is going to be for the bottom bit, the bottom splodges. 
To make it look like splodges, however, you really just need to manipulate the clay in sort of a haphazard kind of fashion. You just want to squidge it here and there and sort of make loops and, and bends um, just so it, it looks really uneven because it is a splodge. It's not like a really pretty marking. It is almost like a watercolour splodge. So you want to make it really irregular where you can. Use all the tools that you have to hand. Handles of um, paint brushes are a really good idea. Toothpicks, needle tools, um, rollers, anything you can just to make it look relatively uneven. And once you're happy with how the orange is going to look, you can then start building up the wing with the um, yellow again, in, with using the sausage technique. You can sort of smoosh this bottom wing around a little bit, so um, don't worry if you think the orange is too much. You can obviously cut some of that off, you can add some more orange to it later. However you want to work it is absolutely fine. Um, you just basically want to create almost a watercolour effect on the bottom of the wing um, in a sort of a, a regular but slightly controlled fashion. Once you're happy with both the wings, um, you want to just add the black detail on the top wing. So I'm making little indents on the outer wing using my needle tool. Then I'm going to roll out some thin snakes of black clay and just add those onto the outer wing. Next I've rolled out some black clay on a 3 setting and I'm putting two layers on the top wing. Then you want to take a blunt instrument like a needle tool or a toothpick or a ball tool and really draw on the vein details onto the wing. Now these will be your cutting guides so you want to make sure that they're as accurate as possible so I would suggest sitting next to a reference while you draw these on. To get the vein colour I've mixed grey with some leftover yellow. Then I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and cut vertically into the cane. I find it sometimes easier to cut very curvy veins in this way. Sometimes more wavy canes I will use an, um, a flexible knife as you can sort of bend those around a little bit more than you can an X-Acto knife. You can see here that I cut all the pieces out at once um, and then I sort of stack them together so that I don't lose the shape. I highly recommend doing this because I often forget which piece goes where um, and then it turns into a bit more of a puzzle than I had anticipated. So as long as I stack them in the right way and then go about either clockwise or anti-clockwise and put them together, it's all fine. So the veins um, are made from a sheet of clay that has been run on a three setting on the pasta machine and as you can see I'm just cutting strips and just adding them into the segments. The best advice I can give you for this is not to double layer it unless you want an extra thick vein. So make sure that the bits that you're covering with the vein colour are only covered once with clay and anywhere where it overlaps onto another grey bit you just want to cut it off. I don't tend to put the wings back together in any particular order. Sometimes I'll start with the middle piece, sometimes I'll start with the edge piece. The effect is the same as long as you make sure that you're only layering the veins once. There aren't many butterflies that have massive veins so you really just want to keep this detail just really delicate if you can. Take your time with the top wing, it's really really fiddly because there are so many little pieces in this particular butterfly, um, it has so many veins that are on show so just take your time and put it together really carefully if you can.
Once you're happy with the shape, you can add some little details. You can see on the bottom wing I've used a needle tool to just indent the wing slightly at each place where the vein meets the edge. And there you have it, the finished cane for the orange barred sulphur butterfly. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I had a lot of fun with Skinner Blends in this one. I hope to see you in future videos. Until then, happy claying!